Are we ready? Yep, we are. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Morning. Only Mia says good morning. Good morning. Loud and clear. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. What day are we in today? Wednesday. 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 August 12, 2020. It's Wednesday. The gospel today comes from St. Matthew. Again, we're back to St. Matthew. Chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. How did you guess? <laughs> you saw my notes already. Okay. Um, so let's read it. Let's read it. It's important to read the whole gospel today because uh, so you can see the, well, what I'm going to explain to you. Okay. So Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he, listen, if he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that the very fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to to them, meaning to you and to your witnesses, if he is still really stubborn and doesn't want to listen, <laughs> tell the church. If he refuses to even listen to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So, there are three things in this uh, reading, gospel reading today. Three prescriptions our Lord makes, our Lord tells us about how wrongdoings can be corrected, can be repaired, and can be made right. right? What are these three things that are all in this gospel? St. Matthew put them all together. St. Matthew put them all together in this one uh, chapter. From verse 15 to 20, he put together three of Jesus' prescription as to how to help others correct their ways. And how others can be, you know, helped towards the road of salvation and sanctification. What are those three ways? Anybody? One? Number one, fraternal correction. Very good, Jacob, right? The doctrine of fraternal correction. What is that? <clears throat> it's when he says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. So first, it's one-on-one. -on -one, right? It's one-on-one. -on -one. You try and correct that brother. And that brother can be anybody. It can be your own brother, your own sister, siblings. Or it can be other people close to you. Other people whose confidence you have. Other people that you, mm. you, you share some form of uh, relationship with. If you notice that they mm. are not quite living up to the expectations from them. That they're not living up to their own Christian faith very well. 
that they might be putting themselves in danger of sinning or they're actually in a state of sin. Okay? It is another brother's duty of charity to make that erring brother aware of his faults, of his mistakes, as a way of helping him to correct himself, as a way of helping him to repair whatever is uh, the malfunction of his life, right? And get him back to the road of uh, uh, sanctification. So it is part of our Christian duty to do that, okay? Yes, we are our brother's keepers, right? Uh, remember that other uh, uh, parable where uh, this person asks Jesus, "Am I my brother's keeper?" You know, uh, or was it was that Cain? I think that was Cain's question to God when God was looking for Abel, right? And he questioned God and said, "Why are you looking for for him from me? Am I my brother's keeper?" Well, <laughs> yes, he is. We, yes, we are. Right? And here our Lord confirms that we are our brother's keepers. We, we need to help each other on the road to sanctity. We need to help each other get to heaven. And one way to help each other is by doing this very beautiful uh, help and, and service called fraternal correction. Okay? And you look up the catechism, uh, it's there. It's there. It's one of the most important teachings uh, of, of the church um, and this is the best way we can help our brothers uh, along the way it's an act of charity that we can do uh, to them now but there's a second prescription of how we can correct this time ourselves from our erring ways we can correct ourselves from our sinful ways and that is by what sacrament Confession, see Jacob, confession, very good. So, and here our Lord talks about it. He says, whosoever sins you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whosoever sins you lose on earth are loosed in heaven. That is in reference to the sacrament of confession. So hopefully after you have corrected your brother through fraternal correction, he gets moved enough by grace to seek forgiveness from his sins and approaches the sacrament of confession okay? and asks our Lord through the ministry of the priest who acts in the person of Christ to forgive his sins. Right? So beautiful. See, you see, it is only, it is only in the Catholic faith where, where you can ever experience actual forgiveness where you can ever experience a sort of assurance that Christ actually forgives you from your sins. Here is where our uh, uh, Protestant brethren and people from other faiths um, have no sense of, of assurance that that they are actually being forgiven from their sins. Yeah, they say, okay, as long as I ac accept Jesus Christ, I am saved. Well, you know, um, that, that, that's not true. While, yes, Jesus Christ died once and for all to save us from our sins, he, he did not say that uh, that's all you need, you know, we, because uh, we, we, uh, we understand that we have a fallen nature and we can continue to commit sins. We, we can continue to offend God. Uh, for which, you know, here it's very clear. He instituted the sacrament of confession so that we can keep going back and seeking that forgiveness from sin and have the assurance of forgiveness from sins committed after baptism. And that is through the sacrament of confession. Now, but there's a third way. There is a third way by which we can render an act of charity towards our brothers who might be losing their way, who might be living lives that are not quite in accordance with the will of God, who might be living sinful lives. And sometimes 
this way is more effective. And uh, it has to complement fraternal correction and confession. What is that way? What is that third prescription that Jesus gives us here that we have to also put into practice as a way of helping others? Straighten up their crooked ways of life. What is that third way? Treat them as if they were Gentiles. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Treat them as if they are Gentiles. No. Mm-hmm. Ah, Chevelle, prayer. Prayer, of course. Prayer. Okay. Now, here's one thing we have to realize. People need grace. In order to correct their ways. People need supernatural help. Okay? We, cannot, we cannot hope to change our ways just by our own efforts. Just by, by our own um, what sheer uh, brute force. And, or, uh, or insistence on, on, on trying to, to, uh, to change. Well, while, while that willpower is necessary. While that effort is necessary we have to understand that since we are dealing with a supernatural reality we are dealing with the 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 um, the effort to try to become saints well we need supernatural help to achieve that we need the grace of god to achieve that goal brute force alone is not going to cut it our sheer willpower alone is not going to do it. We need the grace of God. And that means we need to keep praying for other people, for those people who we want to help towards a road to recovery or towards a road uh, away from sinfulness and back to the path of sanctity. We need to pray for people. And sometimes we forget that. Okay? Sometimes we get frustrated over seeing uh, that, that people are not changing. That even people who are closest to us, people who are part of our own families, people who are dear to us, we could sometimes not stem the grief of seeing their sinful ways, of seeing them live life far from God. And sometimes we feel helpless because we could not correct them or we have tried correcting them, but they still don't care. Sometimes uh, uh, they, they're far from the sacraments so they don't go to confession. So what's the next best thing? The next best thing is to pray. And let's not pray alone. Our Lord says here, you know, if two of you agree Okay? Two of you, at least, agree to pray for something. Look at the guarantee, Jesus says. It shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. Okay? If at least two of you, better if there are more of you, praying for the same intention, praying for a brother, a sister, who needs to, be, to, to correct his or her life, Praying for a person dear to you who needs to straighten up and get back to the road to God and sanctity. We need prayer. We need grace. We need God to be part of the solution. We cannot do away with God. We cannot think that, oh, you know, I'm so persuasive. I'm good with my words. I'm going to correct this brother of mine. I'm going to correct this person. Eh? Because I am the, uh, the <laughs> uh, I am the best influencer who can change him. Guess what? That doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. If we want real change, deep change, lasting change to happen in people, we need to pray. We need to pray for them. And the more of us praying for that one person, 
that we want to uh, to change, then the better, the better it is because we have the guarantee of Jesus here. God is going to grant that my heavenly father is going to grant what you pray for. And so, you know, uh, there, there is where we get the tradition of asking people to pray for intentions, of asking others, not besides ourselves, asking other people's help to pray, to pray for a common intention, to pray for somebody sick, to pray for somebody's conversion, to pray for somebody to go to confession, to pray that somebody changes his ways. It's always good to ask and beg for prayers. Let us be mendicants of prayer. Let us be beggars of prayer. Eh? You know, saints, the saints have always taught that uh, strategy, the, to beg for prayers, not only for ourselves, but to beg for prayers for others. And so we can pull the resources of people praying together for the conversion and change of people we care about. Eh? So this is a very beautiful gospel uh, we have today in today's mass where jesus shows us three ways by which we can change our ways for the better and we can help others change their ways for the better that's it for us have a good day everybody bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs> till tomorrow again okay Thanks for accompanying us, those of you who are on this broadcast. I hope these things help one way or another. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.